Good morning. We have with us today Mac Atram. Mac, welcome to Black Economics TV. Let me tell our audience a little bit about you because you are a man to be held in high esteem. Mac Atram is a business coach and millionaire entrepreneur. He's had many years of challenges and failures in businesses before discovering what really works. Over the last 20 years, he has developed and sold several profitable companies. He's a multi-award winning business coach, international best-selling author, and has been featured as an expert advisor in TV, newspapers, and magazines. In the past 16 years, he has trained and coached more than 100,000 people in over 50 countries. He's trained them to grow their business and their wealth. He was previously named Executive Coach of the Year in the UK. He is the founder and CEO of Mindspace Coaching, helping businesses increase their sales revenues, implement better processes, and build winning business teams so that they can enjoy their lives. And would you believe, I don't know how he finds time for all of this, but he is also an expert in martial arts. Not just one martial arts, but several martial arts. He's been doing this for 35 years and currently holds a sixth Dan Black belt in Taekwondo. Oh my goodness. I'm tired, I'm tired just reading this. Oh, wow. <laughs> Mac, you, you are an amazing person. He's also, of course, as you would imagine, a, a top business speaker, and he has shared the, the stage with many uh, of other uh, business speakers from around the world, including Robert Kiyosaki, T. Harv Ecker, Les Brown, Eric Thomas, James Kahn, Baroness Michelle Mon, and Duncan Banatar. I must say, Mac, we are honored to have you join us. Thank you for okay. taking the time out. Well, thank you very much for inviting me onto the Black Eat Comics TV show. Thank you, Dawn. I really appreciate that. And don't forget, we go back many years. I think we've met probably, oh, I can't remember, more than 10 years ago now. I, I can't remember the exact date, but I remember it was more than 10 years ago now. Yeah, I know it was before 2012 because we had you speak at our first Black Economics conference and, you know, you went down the storm there. And I've been sort of tracking and see how, seeing how things are going. And I'm on your mailing list. I'm always hearing from you, which is great. And it's really good to know that we reconnected again later on. I was able to catch up with what you've been doing. And uh, I've got to say, congratulations on your achievement. Well done. Thank you, now, we're, we're hoping that some of that stardust will rub off on us and those people who are listening today, because you know you have secrets in terms of how you did things and it would be lovely to to hear not just the positive things but also the times when you struggled because you know we all go through those times and sometimes people feel that like you can't make it out the other end but you have and several times too so let's hear more about you mac so thank you for being with us I'm going to go way back. It's something I like to do. I like to know what's happening from, you know, childhood in people's lives. How do they develop to be the way that they are now? So please tell your audience about your early life, your childhood. What were your aspirations as a child growing up? And then tell us about your education. Wow. Okay. Um, thanks for that question, Dawn. I was so i think let me start way back i i was born in a country called ghana which most of your listeners will know ghana and i arrived in the uk to join my parents at the age of around nine years of age uh so south london uh croydon area is where i went to school in the uk and um new country new town i had to make new school new i had to make new friends uh, my English wasn't to the standard of, of people in that area. So it was, it was pretty tough um, growing up. But, you know, it, it's one of those things. I survived it. Uh, I, uh, in turn, my, my parents were very good. My parents really pushed me to study hard at school. I wasn't that great at school. I'll tell you the truth. I wasn't that, I wasn't that academic. academic. Um, it, you know, for me, it was something I had to do. But I, I enjoyed it. 
partly I enjoyed, you know, being at school because of my some of my friends. But in terms of studies, I didn't do that great uh, in terms of grades. But my parents kept pushing me all the way to, you know, I went and did a master's degree, MBA uh, in, in general management and finance. And uh, so that was my school. That was um, uh, that was my early years. And that's uh, part of my education. Did, did you have in mind what kind of career you would want to pursue when you became an adult? When in my late teens, I had a feeling that I wanted to do something in business, but I didn't know what. Um, and what happened was I then, when I graduated, I worked for three, three large companies. I worked in retail management, head office and retail stores, uh, general management, managing people. Um, some of the teams are up to 100, 200 people in, in some of the teams. And um, so I had an idea I wanted to do something in business, but for 10 years, I worked for three of these companies. And after a while, I thought, you know, I'll give you, I'll tell you something, Dawn, what happened is that seven years I worked for one company. They took me as a graduate, a graduate trainee manager. So they looked after me. So, you know, I, I stayed there, got promoted. And after a while, I thought, uh, this is this is not me. I, I'm not really happy here. I'm not satisfied here. And so I left and I joined another company and I stayed there for two years. And then I started. So it was OK at the beginning, managing these people, managing uh, the um, whatever I was doing. But after two years, I thought, I'm not fulfilled. There's something missing here. And then I left them and I thought it must be the company again. So I left the company, went somewhere else. And this next company, I stayed there for one year. And after that, I thought, oh, man, it, maybe it's not the companies. Maybe it's me. And I remember having a disagreement with uh, my regional manager. And I thought, no, this is it. I, I can't do this anymore. And I had been thinking for several months anyway to start my own business and the next day after that disagreement i'll call it an argument if you like <laughs> i came in and handed my notice and um i quit and uh and i started a little little um it computer company uh and i remember my when i handed my notice in my 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 boss at the time said are you crazy this is this is i think it was 1999 going into 2000 do you know what the economy is like you're not going to succeed you're going to fail why would you want to quit and um, and any any time in my life, any time someone's told me that I'm going to fail, I'm not going to succeed at something. Guess what? Somehow it gives me the impetus. It gives me the the engine, the the fire to move forward. And um, so I started my little company, and I thought everything would be good. You know, I've been managing people in in business, albeit someone else's business. Um, I've got an MBA, albeit it's an academic thing. But what I came to realize was this in the first few years, early the early year, I was excited. I, there was some passion. I was making I was trying to make things happen. And after a couple of years, I started to struggle because suddenly I realized I didn't have the wherewithal to understand as an entrepreneur, I wear the hat for marketing. I wear the hat for sales. I wear the hat for customer service. I wear and I struggled so much so that I was tr constantly trying to figure things out. And, you know, today I say to today, I am so, I feel so blessed. I'll tell you why Dawn, I've been married to my amazing wife. Now we've been married for 21 years this year, 21 years. And we have three children, um, a 20 year old, uh, 16 year old, two girls and one boy, 14 year old. But the reason why I tell you that is, when I was struggling in my early years of business, I came to a point where the two business partners I had in that business stole a lot of money in the business. Yeah, a lot of money left me heavily in debt. And so suddenly I'm over, you know, I, I speak internationally, so I often say hundred thousand dollars because most people understand I was over a hundred thousand dollars in debt money that I borrowed from different places to keep my business going. My business partners have disappeared. I'm phoning them, they're not answering. I'm knocking on their door, they, I can't get hold of them. And my, now I'm, I'm, I'm working 90 hours a week, 100 hours a week, and I am stressed out. Wow. And, I'm, and the reason why I tell you about my children, at that time, my, I'd only been married for a few short years and my, um, 
my we had one child and my wife was now pregnant with our second child and i was hardly at home i was hardly at home and there was an incident where one day i was driving home and five minutes tried from my office and five minutes from my home that evening i didn't really, i didn't want to go home and i was i had so much going on in my mind and i was considering it considering what if, you know i remember st stopping my car five minutes from my house in this um in, in in those days there was a pc world shopping sense you know, car park i parked my car there and i sat there sobbing and feeling sorry for myself thinking am i a failure I, i'm a failure how did i get to this point where i'm hardly at home we've got a second child coming it feels like my wife's going to leave me because i'm she, she doesn't see me i'm working all these hours my doctors have said, take it easy. Your blood pressure is rising. You've got to slow down in what you're doing. I'm $100,000 in debt. And I was felt like such a failure. And so that's my early years of, of entrepreneurism. So it came to a moment where I thought enough is enough. There's clearly something I don't know. So in that moment, I was sitting in the car thinking, what is it? Why, why am I such a failure? This is not the life I wanted for me and for, for my family. And in that moment, I realized that my mind, the mind that created my situation cannot be the same mind that takes me out of my situation. So in that moment, I realized I've got to, I, wa I want to study how successful people create great businesses, wealth, happiness, all that kind of stuff. So I went on this journey of self-discovery and I started reading books like crazy to, to ch change my situation. I started um, going to workshops and seminars on business, on wealth, on, 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 on just mindfulness and, and all this kind of stuff. And in, in less than two years, I was able to fix my business and it was started operating well, making great profits. And then I sold the business. When I sold the business, I decided, okay, what am I going to do now? And I started to invest in real estate property. And I started investing in real estate property in the West London area. We have multi-million pounds worth of um, real estate in, in that area. And we still, I still today, yeah, I don't talk about this often, but my wife and I, she's the CEO of that company. We um, invest in real estate property. We develop properties and we rent them out. Um, so, so that's what I did. Uh, but it was a hard slog to understand what works and what doesn't work when it comes to business and entrepreneurism. Mm -hmm. I think you, you made a really good point there. You said the mind that you, you have in this particular mess is not the mind which is going to get you out of it. So mm. you started to read, you started to go to seminars, you started to mix with people who could perhaps help you change. And that's what helped to turn the business around. And that's so important because I think a lot of people, they might buy a book or they might watch a particular video, but they're not following up on that. You know, read, read a couple of pages and then think that will change everything. But you did it for a period of time. Sounds like a long and, period of time. And I still do it. That's the thing. So Dawn, you're absolutely right. Many people do what's called shelf development. They read the book, couple of pages and put it on the shelf, right? Shelf development. Now, when I was broken, struggling, I realized that I'd, I'd um, and when I turned my situation around that I, I reflected and I think, what happened? What, 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 what? And I realized that Yes, I, I, I graduated with an MBA, which is very ac academic and an academic qualification doesn't create entrepreneurial success. There's it, it, you have to create it. So the mind that the mindset that you have can and will create will change your situation. Mm -hmm. So you're absolutely right there. Mm -hmm also makes you wonder why MBAs do not include a period of business experience where you're working in a business to solve a problem. Because as you rightly say, a lot of it is uh, academic and you can't always apply what's academic 
because life is stranger than what's written in the book. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And you just never know what's going to happen sometimes. Okay. So you started to turn that business around, the computer business. What were you doing in a computer business? Was it hardware or software? Or well, what happened was, um, remember I said, before I quit my last job, I was thinking of what to do. And I, I started to study something called, um, I started to design websites. Okay, so I studied how to design websites, how to put them together. And then, um, so I started, when, when I quit my job, I started looking for clients in that realm. And luckily enough, some of the clients that I had then said, Mac, can you, um, you know, I'll go into the office, I'll see them and say, the computer's not working. Do you know much about it? Can you help this computer or this network? So in the end, I got, I had two business partners who came in who, one of them specialized in computer network, computer networking and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so it, we became a go-to company for anything relating to internet design, website design, e-commerce website design, if you wanted to make money on the internet and also computer installation, computer networks. Oh, I see, right. Okay, how long did that business last? Oh, so I started that business. That business lasted about five or six years, I think it was. Okay, okay. So then you 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 closed it, decided to go on to another business? Yeah, I closed that. I read I I went into real estate property. At the same time I went into real estate property, um, I also started some people kept asking me, Mac, can you help me with my business? I know you just sold your but can you help me with my business? Can you help me with my business? So I just started helping people for free. It's like, okay, what's the problem? Because I I'd been through the headache. And I'd been so low and I'd read so much and I've studied so much and I fixed and I knew exactly what to do. So for me, it was easy to help them. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly I realized that people get paid for something called coaching. I didn't know that. So, <laughs> so I started a coaching and training company and, and, um, and, and I started speaking in London and doing training workshops for a few people, you know, five, 10, 20 people. And so I do, and um, so that's what I was doing. And I did that for a number of years um, alongside my real estate property company. I was doing that hand in hand. Okay. And the coaching business is called uh, Mind Space Coaching. Mind Space Coaching, yes. Okay. Uh, many years ago, you, I think many years ago when you came to one of our boot camps, yeah. It was, it had a different, we were under a different umbrella because I was working with a different business partner then. Um, and, you had a and, Chinese business partner. Yeah, great guy. Kurt, Kurt, yeah, great guy. And so we split um, and I carried on doing the same thing. So the sales partners and I, I carried on doing exactly the same thing. And after we, we split partnership. Okay. Okay. All right. Fair enough. So how have you managed to grow that business? So the way I've grown at that business is really doing a, uh, so years ago when I started it, I was very much focused on London and I would um, do adverts, um, various places, and people will come to my workshops in London. So I'll, I'll rent out rooms in near Marble Arch and uh, Hyde Park and um, West London region, wherever it was, people will come. And I'll do this once or twice a month. And and I'd also be invited to speak uh, at different places. Uh, and so I'd speak wherever, wherever in London. But at the time came where I got invitation to speak. So I started locally. Then I started speaking nationally all over the UK through invitation. Uh, and then at some point through a turn of events, I got to start speaking internationally. Now I've spoken in over 50 countries and trained people in over 50 countries, uh, hundreds of thousands of people now. Uh, and so the business has grown very much through uh, me speaking on stage, uh, having great joint venture partners around the world, strategic alliance partners around the world. And also uh, through, we do the, the standard um, social media advertising and um webinars all this kind of stuff so they, 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 there's a, they, i have a team who take care of the marketing and sales but where i come in is very much on the speaking front okay 
So initially you started coaching for free. Yeah. And you found it was effective. And yep. you started to advertise so that people would pay for the coaching. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Now, then one, one thing that I, once you, once you um, said that, I suddenly realized why then how did I get into training and coaching? Yes, people kept asking me. And for me, I was always a giver, always, always helping people. So for me, it was a natural thing to help people. But when I was broke and I was struggling and things weren't going well for me, I remember taking time out and I'll, I would pray and pray and trying to figure things out. And I was just looking for a way out and just, God, please show me the way and help me. And, and I made a vow and I made a commitment, which was this, that when I become financially successful, I'm going to commit and dedicate the entire rest of my life to help as many people to become financially successful and have a better life. And so I remember in 2005, I, I, I wrote down what I believe my mission is on this planet. And I wrote it down and it's been the same since. And my mission, my purpose, my God-given purpose, I believe on this planet is to inspire, educate and empower people to live a life of joy, yeah. courage, passion and purpose. And so training and coaching lends itself to that. And okay. so that same mission has helped, has led me to speak on multiple platforms around the world, okay. um, has led me to publish articles, has led me to publish books, has led me to do my podcast, you know, because of that mission. So, so training and coaching is my purpose. Mm. Business is my passion. Mm. I'm passionate about business. I own several businesses, real estate, etc., etc. That the the training and coaching is my purpose, and 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 that's really what fulfills me. Mm. Okay, can you give me some examples? You don't have to give names of people who whose lives you've turned around through your coaching. Give mm -hmm. me two or three examples of different people. You can call them A, B, and C if you like. Sure. Uh, tell me the the beginning state when you first started talking with them, and yeah. how they how things improved how things got better for them in their business uh, sure. sure so i'll give you um an example of one lady we had her name is anna so anna went before she came to my boot camp and before she started uh, coaching um with us she was she she was in a place where she was working many hours uh she had she has two children uh she's married as well obviously husband that she felt that she was working so hard in her business in something she enjoyed, but she was, she was hardly at home and her husband is beginning to complain. She's not seeing much of her kids in terms of bedtime. She's not there to put them to bed. So one thing we started going through was how to restructure her business to give her more freedom, more free time to be with her family, which is very important to her as well as at the same time, continue growing her business. And so what we did, because I've got various frameworks, various systems that we implement, we implement. So one of the first things we did was give her, I gave, I got her to recruit a salesperson because she was doing the sales. She was doing the delivery. She was doing the fulfillment, recruit a part-time salesperson. So now this person was responsible for sales. And she, I got her to get a, a personal assistant to take a lot of the uh, pressure off her. So someone else is doing all the menial work. Well, cut long story short, she was able to double her business in less than a year and give her more free time mm. to be to do exactly what she wanted to do. Mm. So that's um, one example. I'll give you an example. So um, uh, one of our clients, Ronald, Ronald had been has been in business for over 20 years. But when he came to my business boot camp and um, he realized that actually there's certain things he doesn't know. Because, you know, to be in business for 20 years, clearly, you know, something, mm -hmm. right? Because most businesses, are, most people are out of business within in less than 90% of uh, business startups are no longer there in less than five years. Mm -hmm. okay? So, you know, something But what he said was the business is doing OK, things are going well. But for the last 13 years, his business had been stuck at 800,000 euros a year. So 800,000. Yeah, it's an IT company. 
800,000 a year and he's never gone through that ceiling. Mm -hmm. So he said, Matt, can you help me? Said, yeah, clear, clearly my company can help you. So again, he went through my boot camp, he went through our coaching system. And in this was during the pandemic, right? So this is re recent. So 2020, he was able to grow his business from 800,000 a year to 1.6 million. Mm -hmm. Doubled it. Doubled it, right? Now, is he happy? Yeah. He, but again, a lot, of people, a lot of people don't know, in order to improve your business, there's only so many hours you can work as an entrepreneur, right? And if you don't have the right uh, systems in place, the right structure in place, the right team in place, you're gonna burn out, and which, which is what happened to me. So I know this very, very well. So with Ronald, we, again, again it, it might sound obvious, but again, the first thing we did was, okay, let's look at the way you're structured. So I got him to really start looking at all these systems and start fixing all these systems and how to become a better leader, how to manage his team better, because we've got different processes that people have to, that to, in order to manage your team, there, if you, there, there's delegation stuff that if you know how to do it and do it effectively, things become easier. So he went through all of that. He started putting the right systems in place for sales, for marketing, for his um, customer service, for the operations, and in terms of uh, his team members and everything else. And one of the very first people I got him to recruit as extra was a salesperson. Mm. Why? Because again, he was doing all the sales, then managing the team. I said, you don't have to do that. And so guess what? If you're, if you're looking after the operation and you're doing the sales as well, at some point, something's going to give. If you want to scale your business, you must have the right team, the right talent, doing the right thing and you overseeing it, mm -hmm. right? So I got him to oversee his team rather than being involved at every operational stage. Because he, 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 you speak to him now and he'll tell you, he was the bottleneck in his operation. Everyone was coming to him. I said, it shouldn't be that way. So it's a re-education, got him to just get a part-time salesperson just to sell. That's all their job is to sell. Mm -hmm. And the other people to do what they, uh, and I got him to have group leaders. And then the group leaders are the people who report to him, nobody else. Hmm. So through a lot of uh, restructure, right systems, focus on sales and marketing, it was able to double his business. I think. I hope all that makes sense. Yes, it does. And I like the, the word you use there, bottleneck. Yeah. Because especially with a, a, a lot of businesses that are trying to grow, but feel that they can't afford staff then there is a lot to do but that one person can't handle all those things that need to do it so i suppose part of your training was to show how useful a salesperson could be mm -hmm. because that salesperson could earn their own wages plus yours as well correct 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 and that i feel can be an eye opener for people if they're willing to follow what you say. Yeah, absolutely. Have you come across people who are not willing to follow what you say? Yeah, absolutely. And um, you know, so there are people who think they can do it better. And so they go ahead and do that. And guess what? A year, two years later on, they asking me, Matt, can you help? Because I know you're great at sales and marketing and systems. So what I'm saying may sound obvious, right? But can you really do it? Mm. And most people can't. And guess what? If they could have done it, they would have done it already. So they may be hearing my words and yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I get it. But do you know, do you really know how to grow and scale a business? Mm. Do you really know what talent you must recruit under which particular functions in order for that to work? And if you're not clear on that, you're gonna do go through a lot of trial and error, mistakes. And, 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 and not know it. But the investment you make within through our company gives you the right mindset, gives you the right strategies, gives you the right tactics. And now you have framework to work within, which is, which is guaranteed to, it's proven, it's a proven system that I have, that I've developed for more than 16 years that people follow and it generates results. Yeah, and as part of my recent research 
I attended one of your webinars and I was quite fascinated to see that there were people from all over the world there. <laughs> I was like, wow, Mac is international. Tell me some of the countries some of those people were from. Oh, well, um, anytime I, I do these webinars, I'm, I'm getting people, some, there are people from the USA, from uh, parts of all parts of Africa, Ghana, Nigeria, there are people from um, Malaysia, Vietnam, Singapore, Hong Kong, um, uh, Germany, Austria, uh, Sweden, Norway, um, Spain, Italy. I, 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 I've spoken in so many plate countries around the world that when I do something, people kind of turn up and sometimes I'm surprised that someone from Oman or Dubai has turned up or Kuwait. We had a someone from Cambodia. You was on the, the other night last week when I, Cambodia, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, Cambodia. And I've never been to Cambodia. That's the funny thing. Yeah, yeah. I haven't been, to, I'd love to go to Cambodia. I've never been. I've been to, I've spoken in Thailand and um, Singapore and Malaysia and Vietnam and um, um, Myanmar and uh, a lot of Southeast Asian countries. Uh, I've spoken in the US and um, South America and um, Canada, uh, Africa, all around Africa as well, uh, all over Europe, obviously. Yeah. Uh, and so I think somehow they, 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 they find me. Yeah, which is amazing. So well done there. Thank you. Um, there was a lady, uh, um, I think she was from Malaysia. She was mm. talking about you know how you helped her business. Do you remember her story? Um, oh, that one. I think that one's from India, where she. Um, I think was it India or Malaysia? Because I've spoken in India many times as well. But if it's the one I'm thinking about, she when she started her business, she's a doctor. I think it's the one. Maybe it's the one you're talking about. She's a doctor. When she started her business, which was really in. Um, when she realized she wanted to help other people and she set up this um, event center, she, she, she went from zero, nothing, to making $20,000 a month in less than two years, from nothing to $20,000 a month. And she said, oh, Mac, your trainings have been great. I think that's the one you're talking about. And then there was oh. another lady from, uh, was it Austria? Yeah, Erica, Erica, I think she's from Austria. But again, you know, she is a crisis manager. You know, when you have um, uh, these crisis breakout in different countries, uh, whether it's Ebola or uh, some kind of, um, there's a crisis, whatever crisis they recruit. Her. So she was doing about, um, uh, her business was doing about 9,000 euros a month, 9,000 euros a month. And after, 12 weeks, 12 weeks in one of our coaching programs. Now she's doing 18, $20,000 a month. Oh. So Dawn, I've taken people from zero to making uh, their first hundred thousand. I've taken people from hundred thousand to quarter of a million. I've taken people, we've got a client in um, Romania doing uh, five, five, five five and a half million uh, US dollars a year. And now we're helping him to move to 30 million US dollars a year. And this oh, is the, wow. the same principles, the same strategies. But as long as you understand the mechanism and the framework in order to do that, life becomes easier. But when you don't know, and I didn't know for years, and I'm not talking academic. I'm talking real street smart ways of doing things, not academic. I, I, I've done the academic thing. I know it. And for most entrepreneurs, it doesn't work. There's a time for academic academia and there's time for let's get to put this business let's set up this business the right way so it actually scales and grows uh, with or without you mm -hmm. yeah. but essentially for most client for most clients who come to us most customers the issue is cash flow i'm not making enough money i want to make more money uh, yeah let me i can show you how to do that and we can help you to do that but then as you make more and more money you've got to understand yes at some point you've got to structure your business the right way in order to continue making the money because dawn as an entrepreneur let's say you're working 10 hours uh, uh, you're working 10 hours a day right and you're making 100 grand a year now tell me something if you wanted to 10 times your business now you want to make a million you want to make a million in sales every year are you going to work are you going to say you're going to work 100 hours a week there it's impossible mm. 
Mm. You plant 10 times your number of hours. So that means you've got to leverage people. You've got to leverage systems. You've got to have the right structure in order for that to happen. Mm. Mm. And I like the, the term you've just used. Enable your business to scale and grow with or without you. Absolutely. Because uh, for many of us, the business is almost us. And if you take us out of the business, it stops because we're doing 95% of everything. Yeah. Um, but you're saying, no. And that's a mindset issue. That's a mindset issue. Yeah. Because um, if you have the mindset of a true entrepreneur, you set things up differently. If you have a, uh, if you have a mindset of an employee, guess what? You will, you'll be working hard in everything you do. And I'm not that you're an employee, but if you're working too many hours in your business, it's not really, you're not really a business owner. You're a business operator. You're operating in your business. You're like the employee in the business. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. You know, it's just another job, right? Although, yes, you're in charge of it, but it's just another job. But I think a business, if you set it up the right way, is supposed to reward you in terms of, having a better quality lifestyle so you can spend more time with your family and your kids and do charitable stuff and all the things that are important to you. Mm. A lot of people give up on business. Have you come across that? Where people have a great idea, a great, um, great opportunities that could be coming their way and they give up. What's yeah. your thoughts there? Yeah, many people do. Uh, and, and the reason why that happens is they don't have the right mind set. And you know, my company is called Mind Space Coaching. And without then the reason why it's specifically called that without the right things going into your mind space, you can't improve. Mm. So my, my starting point with all our clients is get into getting them to think differently. Mm. And realize that to be an entrepreneur, you have to think differently, you have to behave differently, you have to have different habits the habits that have got you to where you are now guess what now as an entrepreneur you've got to now think more entrepreneurially mm. and you can't have those bad habits um if you want to continue growing and the, and the, and the have and, and and the character or the virtue or the habits that got you to 100 grand in sales a year often won't get you to a quarter of a million a year often won't get you to half a million a year you've got to think and behave differently so it all starts with your mindset. And secondly, so that mindset I call personal development. You've got to grow at a personal development level. That then coupled with the business development in terms of the know-how, the mechanisms, the, the sorry, the mechanics rather, the strategies on how to do business. I teach people all that all day long, that you can learn all the stuff about business, but if you're not the right person, if you haven't grown into be the right person, that, that, that change won't happen all starts with you and, and the reason why people quit the business is they don't have the right mindset first of all and then they also don't know how to uh operate a proper business or, or to run a proper business and they're not willing to listen and learn and take action absolutely so it's almost like they need to be a new brain have a personality transplant yeah some some people are not coachable you know you can you know i've, I've had <laughs> I've got, I've had friends in the past who said, oh, Mac, you know, my business is not going so well. Can you help me? And I showed them, look, do this, do this, do this, and, and then go, go for it. Uh, and they'll argue with me as to why it won't work before <laughs> even testing it. Look, listen, before even testing it, whilst on the other hand, there are people paying my company thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds for similar solutions. Maybe I'm too close to home. Mm. You know, some people won't listen. Some people are not coachable. Some people won't change. Some people uh, will think I can do it better. I know I, I, you know, I'll figure it out. How many years are you going to spend figuring it out? You know, I was that person that I thought I knew everything until things started collapsing in my family life, in my relationship with my wife, in my business, in my finances. When I said, I'm going to surrender. Mm. God help me. Mm. That's when I started looking for the right mentors, right coaches that took me on the right path mm. and really changed my life, I believe. Mm. 
Do you think it was a, a coach that helped you, helped you as well, apart from the yeah, yeah, yeah. the events and so on, the coach helped you? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. And that's the reason why I still have coaches who coach me now. Really? Yeah. Yeah, oh. absolutely. Because with, you see, we all know what we know, but at the same time, we don't see what we don't see. So when you think, when you look at every single successful sports person, or business owner, you'll notice that they, they've got some kind of mentor, some kind of advisor or a coach who are behind them or beside them, helping them move forward. And so I never went, I never wanted to go back to where I, you know, where I was in a bad place. So I constantly study. I still go to certain specific seminars or workshops that I want to learn something. And I have coaches who coach me to keep me um, where I want to go. I'll tell you something in 2000 and I think when we met in 2010 or 11, I was only still speaking in um, London and uh, nationally. And at one point I said, I want to be world class at what I do. I want to be world class at what I do. So I got a coach to help me to be world class in terms of speaking, in terms of training, in terms of coaching. And in doing so, in that same year, in that same year, 2010, I remember I was invited to come to Holland to speak on stage alongside Robert Kiyosaki and some other great, you know, Robert Kiyosaki, rich dad, poor dad, who um, is a friend of mine now, but he was a mentor of mine for years. Now I'm on the stage, sharing the stage with him, sharing the stage with people like Brian Tracy and Les Brown and all these people I studied from. Now, it, but only because I said I wanted to be world class. And how do I how do I become a world class speaker and trainer and coach? I got a coach to help me to do that. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, interesting. And I found it interesting. You said that you were telling friends what to do, and they were arguing with you as to why it wouldn't work. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Whilst on the same advice, people paying us for the same advice, and it's working for them. Mm, that's very odd. It's very strange. Okay. What about um, the last 18 months or so during the pandemic? Have you found that business has been stable or increased or have you suffered during the pandemic? Very good. See, so during the pandemic, um, our real estate property business has continued. And I'll tell you how we've done that in a moment. The, um, the training and coaching business took a hit massive hits like oh mac is not able to tra travel now you know so that took a hit but what we did very very quickly was to take everything online because you know i run business boot camps and i run business millionaire business retreats and all that kind of stuff um so our business boot camp i had to restructure the whole program because our boot camps are experiential we get people moving and doing things and not just sitting down but behaving entrepreneurially uh, and so I had to restructure everything and I wrote, rewrote the, the whole program to make sure it's conducive for, for online. So we've, we've been running our business boot camps virtually. Uh, and so, so we thank God it's, uh, it's helped and it's helped us to grow um, as well. And at the same time, a lot of my joint venture partners and strategic alliances did the same thing. So now, instead of me flying getting the plane to fly to a country, they'll just put everyone virtually, I'll turn up, I'll do the training, I'll do the, whatever I need to do, and I haven't even left my office. Yeah, and you're still getting paid. <laughs> and I'm still getting paid. Good, good, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. What changes did you make in your real estate business? Right, in the real estate property business, uh, we have we have three different uh, branches of our real estate. We, 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 um, we developed properties, so that still came to a halt for a little while where we had to lock down, the builders couldn't build, um, but now, you know, things are fine. The, uh, we have uh, properties that we buy and we rent out for rentals. And so that was okay, mostly. I think we had one, we had maybe a couple um, who um, were losing their job or something were changing, but we managed to fix that for them. So that was okay. And, but the big one that took the biggest hit was our service accommodation business. Uh, service accommodation is 
the properties that we own. We have a lot of properties around the West London area and the Heathrow area. And, but I took a hit in the sense that, um, so service accommodation is um, Airbnb type, booking.com, Expedia type, short lets. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and so what we did was we contacted a local, my team, um, led by my wife, contacted the um, local authorities and, and said, look, do you need, uh, do you need accommodation and properties for um, key workers? And guess what they said? Yes, we do. Oh, so wow. it's, it's, it's by changing the mindset that, huh, this business is, there's no, there's no one flying in. What are we going to do? Yeah. This is money. So we start, we, you know, we brainstormed it. We thought about it, what we do. And the team are amazing. They said, what about other people who are, so the, the, the uh, local authorities said they had people coming in from, they, 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 from all over the country, they needed accommodation from. And so that was okay until, so that, 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 <laughs> that, helped a, that helped a lot but this is what i'm saying it's all about the mindset because if you tell you and the reason why a lot of people let me answer your question a lot reason why a lot of people don't succeed in business is often they tell them a story they tell themselves a story and that story is only true to them for example i could tell myself a story which is our service accommodation business Oh, no one's coming in. Uh, okay, we just have to shut it down because there's there's no one traveling into Heathrow. Uh, we can't, you know, no one booking on Airbnb, no one booking on booking.com, no one's coming through TripAdvisor, Expedia. Or, so what should we do? Let's shut it down and, and no. That's a story. Okay, where's another story? Okay, is there a possibility that there are people who still need accommodation right now that we haven't thought about. So let's brainstorm it. Who else, apart, because the vac properties are vacant, who else would want to utilize that? That's a different story. Mm. I can do this is one story. I can't do this is another story. Yeah. yeah. Both stories are true, <laughs> but they're only true to you. I can't start a business. Yes, you're right. I can. I'm looking forward to starting a business. Yes, you're right. Fantastic. I can't grow my business. Why not? Because, you know, I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth and um, my parents are not rich. Yeah, that's true. I'm going to start a business because the childhood I had or the background you know, there was no entrepreneurs um, and I know entrepreneurs make a lot of money. So I'm going to start a business. I'm going to make that happen. What do you think? Go for it. That's true. But one mindset will get you to where you want to go. And the other mindset will also get you to where you want to go. One is nothing, stuck, paralyzed, procrastination. And the other one is moving forward, figuring it out, asking for help, finding the right resources that will help you to get there. Yeah, exactly. And then thinking outside the box helps as well, doesn't it? Definitely. Every single time, every single time, especially when in the period of crisis, in the period of cri in the, in the, at the point of crisis, there are a couple of things that can happen. Sh shut up and give up. Or ask yourself, what are the opportunities right now? What are the opportunities right now? Mm. And we've had clients uh, during the pandemic who were suddenly, you, I, listen, the, the, my team and, my, and I and my coaches around the world had to really get them to think differently because some of them had businesses where they needed footfall, they needed people to pass yeah. through. And we had to get them to think differently in terms of, what can you do then? And so some of them were forced to go online and provide their services online and find a way. So there's always an opportunity within a crisis. And that's one of the good things also about a coach or mentor is that sometimes they can see things in a different light to the way that you're seeing it. Definitely. And they can come up with new ideas like that. 
yeah. while they're speaking to you. Yeah. Um, and I, I find that really interesting. Yeah. So I think you're, you're doing a really good, uh, really good job with the amount of people that you're, you're coaching. And I believe you have a team of other coaches that work under you as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I used to do a lot of coaching myself back in the day, but as and when we got more and more busy, I uh, got busier and busier. Um, I, I brought um, some coaches on to coach our clients and we've got, because uh, we've got a coaching program on how to become a coach. So they, anyone who qualifies through that can, will have, they'll uh, have the opportunity to coach our clients and we've got coaches around the world who, um, who do that for us. Okay, great. So anyone who wants to um, become qualified to be a coach can work with your program and then they can become part of your team. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. There's a qualify there's a qualification process to go through. Yes. Obviously, um the standard, the world class standard that I've set, not everyone makes it. Not everyone makes it through. <laughs> yes, I understand. I understand. Okay. What about racism? Have you experienced any of this during your business life? Oh, good question. You know, um as 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 a black man growing up in London or or living in the UK, I do experience uh, racism in various forms. As a child, I experienced it a lot, um, and but now in business, it's not. It, for me, it's not so overt. It's not so overt. Okay, so for me, I don't spend a lot of time thinking about that. What I do spend a lot of time doing is thinking about how do I add more value? How do I add value, value, value? So that the when the way I teach business, especially marketing and sales is this, there are people who have certain problems, right? They have problems or pains or challenges and they're looking for a solution. So if, you can, if I can focus on creating a great solution for them, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if I'm white, yellow, green, red, it doesn't matter. If they feel that solution is gonna help them, guess what? They buy. Mm. And that's why I've got clients from all over the world, mm. all over the world, because I'm not focused on me. Because I've realized that, and for many of my clients, I tell them the same thing, don't focus on you. Focus on the people you're trying to help. Mm. And so that racism, clearly is there in the world it's there in the uk but that's not my focus mm -hmm. many years ago one of my coaches said this to me he said mac what you focus on expands really yeah what you focus on expands so if you're focused on people won't like me because i'm black that's going to be your focus and guess what people won't like you because of that because you will um ignite that you will show that in various facets, right? If I focus on creating great products and services, great solutions, that's my focus. That's my focus. And so let me, so allow that to expand. And that's the universal law. I didn't make that up. So if you, so watch this, some people are focused on this. I'll, I'll keep it very simple. You know, in our minds, we have, something called the you know the ras the reticular activating system most people have heard of it so give you a clue um imagine that you want to buy a new bmw um new bmw 5 series blue blue car hmm. right and now you're driving down the road you never noticed it before now but how many uh blue BMW 5 Series, on the, are you noticing? You're mm. noticing it because you have focused on it. Mm. So the same as in business, the same as in sales, same as in wealth creation, if you well, watch this, m most people are focused on how much money they don't have, on lack, mm -hmm. rather than how much money or grateful for what they have. God, I'm grateful for what I have here. Thank you. Now that's a focus. Ah, oh, I'm broke this month. Ah, oh, I'm struggling this month. Ah, oh, I'm struggling again. I'm struggling. 
That's a focus. And what you focus on will expand. If you focus on being broke, you'll continue being broke. If you focus on being grateful for what you have, grateful for the money you have, you'll have more of that. Mm-hmm. Yes, very good phrase there. What you focus on expands. That's good. I think you could probably. And it's, you and could... it's not my phrase. It came from T. Harvecker. You know, oh, I, really? I studied. Is is a guy Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. I've learned a lot of stuff from him. Um, so it, it, all these little things really helped me to really reposition myself, reposition my mindset on, on, on money, on business, on wealth, all that kind of stuff, on happiness. Um, and so when someone's struggling, clearly I know what they're focused on. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. So do you take on apprentices or interns? We don't, we are considering it. We, we don't because um, at the moment, but we are team up, I've mentioned it and we are considering um, taking on uh, apprentices or interns, but we haven't take, we haven't pressed the button on that as yet. Hmm. Do you have youth coaches, no. young people who are coaching other young people? No, we, we're focused on purely business coaching. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's our focus. That's our niche, business okay. uh, helping uh, our clients to either start or grow their business. So you clearly have some very successful businesses. That's fantastic. How are you giving back? Very good. There are some people, the way I give back is obviously one way is through the ch- our church, but um, the other ways is through my mission, which is to inspire, educate, and empower people to live a life of joy, courage, passion, and purpose. So anytime that, um, I come across certain people who are struggling, then either me or some of my coaches, we, we, we scholarship people sometimes. We scholarship people so that they can get themselves into a better place. And when they get themselves into that better place, then the idea is please pass it on. So we do scholarship people um, to, to improve in what they're doing, whether it's life or in business. Okay, so this is where you're you're coaching for free, basically. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So the sky's the limit for you. What are your ultimate goals? Tell me. Oh, good question, Dawn. You do ask them, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, what's my ultimate goal? My ultimate goal is to continue in, to continue to um, personally to live my mission. Uh, and the vision is to ch- continue to train and coach as many people around the world to to just have a a, a better better life, better way of life. Um, whether it's business, whether it's wealth, whether it's money, whether it's happiness, whether it's relationships. And um, for us, the focus is on business because if someone's struggling in business and um, they can turn that around, then they're making more money. Um, they can look after their community. They can look after their parents they can look after their family they can give more charitably and that headache diminishes so i'm just going to continue in doing what i'm doing already so you mentioned you're part of a church could you tell us what church that is oh we go to a church here in in west london okay Okay. and you've been there for a while yeah 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 we uh, we've been there for over 15 16 years or so so the spiritual aspect of your life is really quite important yeah, I think so. I think as human beings, it's not just about, you know, there are people who focus on one area of their life and that's all they focused on. But I think as human beings, we are uh, more than just one aspect. We are whole beings oh. and whole beings mean that we have a physical body. Mm-hmm. That means we have emotions. Mm-hmm. That means we have um, mental capacity that we must utilize that means we have a spiritual side for all of us we have a spiritual side some people choose to embody that and realize that actually uh, yes i'm a physical being in this world yes i I have a job or i have a business i make money i do this these are all physical i have a roof over my head i invest in this i invest these are all physical right um but those who are very conscious knows, know that we are spiritual beings having that physical experience. And for me, and I'm not saying, you know, for, for I'm, more phys- I'm more spiritual than uh, religious, 
And so for me, meditation, prayer, gratitude, forgiveness, all these things are important to me because it gives me a sense of sanity. Years ago when I was broke and I was struggling, guess what I was focused on? I was focused on the physical. Mm. Business, 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 make money, make money. And guess what? When that started collapsing, I realized that actually I ignored um, uh, my, I, 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 I'd, um, I'd, I'd, I'd ignore the mental side. I wasn't learning. I wasn't growing. I wasn't studying. Um, from an emotional point of view, I was being arrogant. I, I had a lot of ego. Um, I wasn't caring for people. From, from, so for me, embodying all of that, I think it's very important for for um, for well-being. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really important part of our lives that everyone needs to be aware of. You know, the spiritual side, whatever um, religion people are, or however they find that uh, mindfulness. People really need to practice that every day because sometimes life gets tough. Yeah. And we've got to look after our mental health. And being busy, busy, busy doesn't always help with our mental health. It doesn't, definitely doesn't. You're absolutely right there. Mm. So thanks for that. Well, I think you've given some amazing gems today. Thank you so much for doing this interview. I know that people will be able to watch it and uh, listen and learn and maybe put into action. And then if they want coaching from you, then uh, we will put your, your website. Um, remember that your name is Mac Atram. Mind Space Coaching is a business. They can Google you, but we will put links underneath as well. Thank you so much, Mac. It's been a pleasure talking to you. You're most welcome. Thank you, Dawn. Until we speak again. Yeah, I've picked up a few new tips as well. So thank you. You're most welcome. Take care until we speak again. Bye for now. All right then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.